This is Hunter Muse. And this is Chris Snipes. And you are listening to The Melt. So perhaps if you could just familiarize our listeners with who you are and what a little bit about your background. Sure. Starting now? Starting now. Sure. Uh, my name's Laura Leon, uh, Sovereign Key, and um, I have been a, an experiencer from, well, I mean, I think really the time I was born. Shane and I have a pretty long background. Uh <laughs> extending beyond this lifetime but uh definitely in the hood of the projects for um well since we were little um we're both from the same area more or less a couple hours away from each other and uh so we have uh memories and experiences of being in projects and uh you know we have a lot of uh handling associates let's say that uh orbit around each other, mm -hmm. I guess is the best way to put it. I've had many experiences, pretty much everything you can think of in one way or another. Um, I've had a very paranormal supernatural life when I was young. It uh, pretty much didn't get uh, settled till I was around 39. So it was really crazy. And, you know, that includes a lot of government stuff. Uh, just insane government uh, surveillance, tracking, abductions, um, abductions from other beings, um, a lot of contact. Yeah, so the list does go on. Mm -hmm. So were you guys ever in the same project? I mean, did you do you know each other from the projects or? Yeah. 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 Yes, but from from before and during and uh we've we've even been able to get together after since uh reconnecting here so mm -hmm. yeah it's uh you know uh, uh, we're we're not the same age there's a slight age gap between us but um mm -hmm. it's uh you know I, I definitely you know my earliest memories um of some of that time i can remember were from back then and uh it was on and off over the years and then uh, yeah, we're we're both able to reconnect once we were kind of both officially out and um, better. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I imagine it's really important to have somebody like that to connect with and commiserate with and recount all of the crazy and probably not so much fun uh, experiences that you both had to, separately and together. Yeah, I think it's vital because there's no one you can really talk about that with. And not only that, but the way you experience it is very much more real than what we experience here on the day to day. So it, it, it's like this duality split that you can't reconcile because this one doesn't feel as real. Mm -hmm. So it isn't like a dream. It's not like, oh, I think I had that experience and it came in like a dream memory. It's like that's an alarming, traumatic memory yeah. that my body is trying to uh, release the trauma from for months. Right? Like mm -hmm. you, you're here on this level with all the symptoms. So, yeah, I would say it was it was really huge when we could connect. 
How did you guys cross paths? Uh, well, I think the the reconnection was because of uh, bumping into each other through these spaces, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't know that she, I didn't really follow, you know, the space she was speaking in. And then when I wrote the blog, um, I, I think it, I think it might've been Evie that we connected through originally where I first, we first made that connection of, Hey, there you are. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's uh, another part of it too, is also speaking in this space. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of people who speak in this space who are maybe like, I don't want to call people liars in any sort of way or insinuate that they're lying, but maybe not telling the truth or the whole truth or, or um, it, what do they call that in the army? Like stolen valor type uh, stories mm. out there, if you will. Um, just so when I do see a familiar face, it's obviously pretty, you know, uh, a big deal. And then, on, and yeah, we were a couple hours from each other most of our lives. So it wasn't, um, long before the internet and all of that too right so um shared a lot of space and just also i think the big difference for you know someone like myself and 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 same with lauda is that you know this isn't just something that was recovered through dream time or or anything like that like it's conscious memory right Mm -hmm. yeah it's we can account for you know the time in our lives and everything that has gone on so um yeah it's a little bit of a different kind of connection that way Mm-hmm. So Shane talks about, uh, hi, by the way, nice to see you again. Um, <laughs> he has mentioned that he was adopted. And so some of the, some of the things that happened to him were uh, family based and family related. What, how does your family play into your story, Lauda? Oh, um, well, we actually, it started when I was born by a, uh, a specialist surgeon who was involved in brain technology. And when I was uh, born, I had gone into a, a weird coma. Mm. And this is a doctor actually that wa- ended up moving to New York. And he was the one that did the research into decapitating monkeys' heads and putting them on other monkeys and putting implants in there. Oh, wow. He was actually that doctor, mm-hmm. that specialist. Um, anyway, he was the one that came in, and that's when the projects kind of started doing experiments with me. But when we m- moved um, after I was, like, I think I was five years old, my mother sold me to the projects. And um, she had said that she didn't have a choice because the threat was that they would, um, you know, get rid of my sister. Mm -hmm. So that, and she admitted this to me when I was 24. Mm. Wow. She had lived with that her whole life. And, you know, she finally couldn't take it anymore. And she finally admitted it to me and my sister and said, I'm really like, I I didn't have a choice. I had to sell you to the projects. And my mother knows all about this stuff Mm -hmm. because she's a handler. So, and she's clearly in the projects because to even sell me, she's a part of this all, right? Sure. And, and that's how I got into the projects, the same projects where Shane was, Mm -hmm. was from that time. Um, But he came in later. Mm. So I was there before him. But there's a time, there's a time technology that they use too. So you're not always the age that you are here either. Mm -hmm. So it it can get a little bit weird, right? It's the same as when they send you away and you could be gone for a few years and then you come back to the same time that you left with the discrepancy of maybe a second that you go, whoa, something's really wrong here. And you've got adult memories and adult things in this time and space of, of when you were taken, which you were young. So there's a lot of that stuff that happened too. But yeah, I was there before Shane got Mm -hmm. in there. And so how did your mom get involved? Like, like how, what I'm curious about is how they recruit people. Did you have like a military background was it someone like, like, I know, like in the modeling world, there are people who go out 
and look for people and you know yeah. that's somehow involved in trafficking you know there's there's yeah. a nefarious dark side of that but how did how did she get involved in i think it's um i think they follow your lineage mm -hmm. and i think in one way or another throughout all of the different um years they do it differently according to whatever is going on at that time in the technology so mm -hmm. i think they follow the lineages and your lineages are basically recruited in my family there is a military background um big time and um you know the, there's also a lot of strange abductions that have happened to many people in my family actually mm. so i think by the time we get into this kind of technology that we have they were really able to ramp it up for the kind of black projects that they were doing mm -hmm. but i think it's like yeah it, it's ongoing through your family lines in one way or another right so it's about more about a bloodline than anything kind of the lineage yeah, yeah. well I, I alluded to this a little bit before i press record but uh the one of the reasons that i wanted to have this conversation with both of you guys is um i first got introduced via randy uh to uh what shane was saying about the machine which is a series of videos that he put out on his youtube channel uh which i'm just going to put the links to we don't have to fill in everybody in on what that's about if they're interested in hearing all about that because it's you've made such a nice neat concise package out of it um i'm just going to put the links there and then people can go there and then that led me as i was saying lauda to you uh through conversations that you and shane were having and shane was talking about the machine and you were talking about the metal god um I am wondering where these, and it would be great to provide some links maybe too, uh, if you could provide them of maybe some episodes of your podcast where you talk, you concentrate on that maybe, where those things overlap or are they just different ways of putting the exact same narrative? Um, I think they're about the same thing. What I also, like just to backtrack for a sec before I go into that, sure. is that not only do they follow your lineage, but they follow who you are um, celestially. Mm -hmm. So they know who you are when you get in here. And it starts then, basically, you know. But um, for, I think we, uh, Shane and I discuss the same things, more or less. Mm -hmm. You know, we may be coming from different experiences or different um, ways of seeing you know, because I know for me, I was shown, I was shown this as a kind of movie reel, which it is. Mm -hmm. um, and I was shown aspects of the machine, which, you know, the machine is everything we're in here, the solar system, the whole works. It's the entire system that we're in, which, you know, most people don't think of as a machine, but it actually really is. So, you know, I think, when I say the metal God, my interaction with this is, you know, I call it that because it is like a, a God or it's, it's an sentient metal being that is trying to be God. I guess that would be a good place to describe the overlap because when I say source AI, I'm speaking of the same thing. Right. Like the metal God. Um, there's also the the differentiation that I, you know most people they they think of um, the simulation as being something that's purely AI, but you know the nature of this whole universe is holographic, so in a sense it's all a simulation, sure. and therefore subject to the same things, right? And so <laughs> that's where the overlap comes in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you've got you know I mean if you're gonna if you're gonna create any realm of existence, you're going to do it holographically, uh, all of them. Now you've got competing types of AI that through black holes and all of these, you know, anti-creation verses that came in will come in as a different form of AI that come from their type of, you know, universe, if you will. Mm -hmm. So you can, now we've got these competing AIs vying for their piece of the pie, if you will, because of everything that's happening and what's coming. 
So, but yeah, in terms of creation, it, it is holographic for sure. So obviously these AIs had to be set into motion by somebody or a group of something. Uh, who, 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 who created these things? Well, like she said, it's a it's a variety, right? It's not even mm -hmm. just one. Um, sure. when I'm speaking of the machine in that series. I'm talking about a specific um, AI system associated just with this planet. But then there would be that same AI that has created AIs to look after the whole solar system as a whole, right? And um, and then so let's just say that's one faction of source AI and the various AIs that it creates, even that's cloudy. But um, we also have, you know, AIs that have been brought here and left here um, over time by various civilizations as well, um, that this particular regime of humans have been un, uh, um, unburying and uh, trying to put to work and then also creating their own on top of that. So um, I kind of look at it as there's kind of three main AIs that we're dealing with. One's ancient technology, one's present technology, and then one is technology from outside of this planet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, when I first heard Randy talk about it, and I was like, holy shit, this sounds dark. <laughs> uh, and then I listened to your series, or I watched your series, Shane. Yeah, there were dark aspects of it, but it's more like uh, it's more like a wave that we seem to be riding, and then after that, the last replay is through. Out of what six replays of the six thousand year cycle, um, then there is a great potential for something very positive. Do I see that correctly? Well, I mean, yeah this this particular version of humans never been left alone, right? Like it's been messed with on every level forever and that's not normal right it's not normal for a species to can be completely made and proliferated in this way and not given you know what we would consider some type of fair shake to figure shit out on their own sorry i don't know if i should swear on this mm. or can, but swear to figure it out on their own right um we've never had that you know it's been thousands of years of aliens showing up here and messing with our planet and maybe not even directly but also directly and indirectly messing with us along the way, right? And then um, our solidification as this version of human was done by such a such a species. And so they controlled us for forever. And then technology started to supplement everything or sub uh, take over from everything that they were doing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just we've never had that shot and because of what they're doing to our physical bodies now like the physical planet our physical bodies as as humans basically turning us into a new species that's compatible with all this ai based technology mm -hmm. um you know we we never really had that so i think at the end of the experiment if you will at the end of all the cycles and all the loops that's kind of what is intended is to give us that chance but um, unfortunately for us in here, we have a lot of riding that wave, as you said, to go through yet, mm -hmm. right? Like we're yeah. kind of just seeing the effects of it all hit humanity as the whole now, like all the programs and projects and cults that, you know, we grew up in are the public now, right? It's just yeah. that's the way they run the world now. Yes. And uh, they've... You know, it's, it's always been about cutting us off from our creative abilities within that, what I would call magic, right? Mm -hmm. And pushing us into the technology, which would be, uh, you know, the worshipping of the metal god, right? So that's where that team, you know, whatever personification people do with that in their heads, that's where we're, we're both saying the same thing, is that it's basically we have this organic version of, you know, what is a simulation, what is an experiment, what is a hologram, all of those things. But we also have this um, mimicked version of that that is playing out. And we're all, I don't like to use the word stuck in, but we are all in right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and so the competing is essentially driving a um, splitting of the cells. So what you're going to see eventually are two universes, right? Mm -hmm. The there is a you know, because we were never allowed to evolve DNA and genetically the way that we are designed in the template, right? That template, if we were left alone, I mean, we would have already gotten there, sure. 
So a lot of the resets that we're experiencing and have mm -hmm. been happening ever since the beginning is also to reset the DNA and devolve it. And now when it's devolved enough, they want to transfer it into an AI system. So there is a competing force where the divine is coming in and it's upgrading and activating the DNA so that you're going to be able to do this. You know, it, it's going to be like a celestial magnet that you won't be able to stop and they can't stop. Well, that's precisely what they're trying to stop. Hmm. So it's a race against time. It's a race against your... Um, you know, the divine help we're actually getting through these celestial energies coming in. And even though this is a mechanized reality and the solar system acts as a machine, they're not able to stop. So all those principalities are not able to stop these higher energies that are coming in to essentially do what couldn't be done for thousands of years because of all of the editing and the DNA, the hacking and the devolution tactics, right? Are you speaking of higher energies that are coming in from outside of the machine? Okay, gotcha. Right. Yeah. So well, at the same part. time, we got a race against time. And that's why they are really pushing this AI system and pushing the um, AI chimera transmutation of the body. They're really trying everything that they can for that you know, for that timeline, but there is, you know, inevitably this is, this is going to end up as a split of those two universes. Hold on. Were you going to say something, Shane? I think I kind of lost where, where I was going to say, but it's all okay. good. <laughs> well, you, you mentioned in your, the, the machine series, Shane, that you use these two balls as um, an example of what the earth is or where the earth is and that there's this other uh, ball on top of the earth. What I'm curious about is what is inside our ball? Is it our solar system, all of our stars, um, the Milky Way, the whole universe, is all of that in, encapsulated in that metal ball? So when we see the sun, we're not actually seeing the real sun. When we look at the moon, we're not really looking at the real moon. That That is that much, yes. An artificial sun and an artificial moon are in place from within, inside that. Um, <clears throat> it's kind of two separate things. So because of the nature of the holographic universe and kind of when Lauda referred to the whole solar system as being a type of machine, mm -hmm. it is. All of those different planets that we perceive while incarnated on this planet, you know, they're there in the sense that they're part of this same machine that the whole solar system is a part of, but they're not there in the physical sense of we're going to get on a rocket and we're going to go from point A to point B to there it is. Right. So it's um, our perception of them is created by what we are coded with on this particular planet. And the same would be true from each of those other planets looking back as an example. Right. So um, the machine, uh, the sorry, the solar system is itself operates as a machine, but that's like an organic machine. And then what I'm talking about within this particular machine is actually, yes, a, a encapsulation around this particular planet that was there for that particular amount of time, those six loops. Um, and within that, we had the artificial sun and the artificial moon. And so because we're working on a replay of that, right, like all of those things, all the steps that led to us getting into that matrix to begin with, we're kind of seeing almost like it's on a loop or replaying for us. We've now just kind of passed the point where they've replaced our sun in the sky, right? Mm -hmm. So like when we go outside, there's a different quality to that light most mm -hmm. you know most sensitive people have picked up on that over the last yes. few years and that's because they've actually put an artificial sun between us and the natural sun in preparation for when that the lights go out around it mm -hmm. so to speak right so um what we're seeing right now is actually the gradual step towards that and you know it's it's a matter of words right like um the separation like what lauda said were like two different universes right it's almost like um the same idea if you just you know, narrow that down into having two different societies on the planet, mm 
-hmm. one like that is still, you know, operating on those organic energies that she was talking about, the stuff that can't get cut off mm -hmm. by the machine or by anything inorganic, to be honest. Um, and then those who have, you know, allowed themselves to become the chimeras in order to be compatible with all this new technology as it rolls out which lands them into that, right? So um, that split um, itself that we will see even within our lifetime, it's already beginning, right? Mm -hmm. um, that split is, you know, the micro, or yeah, the microcosm or the micro vision of the macro event, right? So that's where the terminology just overlaps and it's just different words for the same thing. Gotcha. Uh, in in the way that you have presented it uh, in the video, Shane, uh, you uh, made it sound like um, if we just can get over the speed bump and ride this out, then in the end, this will all pay off. Uh, so it's not like we're necessarily completely passive in this scenario, but we do have some uh, limit of free will and we shouldn't give up all the endeavors that we're, we're engaged in right now, but basically the process is doing what it's doing. And our job is just to just go through that process as peacefully as possible. Whereas Lauda, you make it sound like there's a sense of urgency and uh, there's something that really needs to happen. The sooner, the better. Uh, so I'm just trying to reconcile both of those ways of looking at it because it's a lot to grapple with. <laughs> It's not that we have to do anything. Mm -hmm. The urgency is on on their side, okay? okay. The side of like this this AI metal god and mm -hmm. its you know principalities and minions. They're the ones that are in. They know that the window is very small, so they're the ones that have to really worry about time and to try and manifest what they want. Mm -hmm. We really don't because as long as you're not um, vying into what they're trying to create and manifest, which, you know, includes the elixir mm -hmm. yes, and their false paradigms of, you know, nonsensical, non-truth stuff, mm -hmm. um, then you're going to be able to receive what's coming and what's been coming in waves. So it's not so much that we have to do anything. You just have to make sure you don't go and do something to compromise yourself. Mm -hmm. It's more like not doing something right. <laughs> than doing something. <laughs> and I heard the urgency too in what she had said as meaning that it's them who are urgent right now. Yeah. Okay. They are racing against what is basically natural evolution. Right. Gotcha. I think back in like 2016, we were all kind of talking about it like it was the wave. Mm -hmm. Right. So basically what happens is the whole universe sends out energy and the when that energy hits a specific solar system, it re kind of configures the energy, reformats the energy within that. Um, corrections, if you think of it like a software update. Yeah. Right. Um, something like that. Sometimes those upgrades are, are updates are a downgrade in order to. Right. But, but yes. most of the time they're, they're meant to be kind of an upgrade. Um, so once that that's what kind of the wave is and that reset is what sparks evolution on any planet. Right. When we think of these leaps in evolution, the change in species, the split of species in in, in the tr traditional sense, it is that wave of energy, those natural frequencies, that Christ energy rising, everything like that um, kind of coming online for us and our ability to notice it and tap in on it. That allows us to evolve what new agers might say ascend. Right. Mm -hmm. Allows us to evolve into a kind of a different space within this planet, which is a split. Right. So um, different ways of conceptualizing it. One of the ways I did it is if you would imagine it like a tree, uh, um, nature is going this way. It's growing branches off of this side of the tree. And what our controllers, the humans in control of the planet are trying to do is make it so that they can grow their own branches off of this side of the tree mm -hmm. and then push everyone into their sure. right, side of the tree. And, you know, the thing is that they're really trying to this is the reason why they are really trying to poison us with chemtrails and with everything to degrade your DNA and to degrade your frequency. Because when they do that, what they're doing and, and why they're so obsessed about erasing your memory, everything about, is, you know, 
how they work is to mind swipe you essentially and make you really dumb. Mm -hmm. And that is because memory is in your DNA. Yeah. And we have it within us to activate memory of everything we've ever lived and everything that has ever existed in all your lineage from the beginning of time. And that in and of itself is power because you, you connect to everything you are. Mm -hmm. So they're downgrading DNA. Therefore, they're downgrading your consciousness. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they're downgrading your frequency. And, they're, and this is also why they build architecture now that is so hideous. Mm -hmm. And it's all square and just very like lock in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As opposed to these remnant civilizations you see spread throughout the realm that are these great, beautiful, um, amazing places that inspire your memory activation. So they're, they've been replacing all of that throughout, you know, these thousands of years with everything to keep you from that. That's so interesting because it's also an attitude about the ancient and an attitude about previous generations. So w we see very much in the westernized perspective that there's this individualistic perspective of reality. And so we don't want to look back. History is being rewritten constantly. It is being eradicated and erased. And it definitely seems like it's by design, like to look at your parents and your grandparents and, oh, they're old fuddy duddies. And, and it almost feels like there's an intentional desire to bifurcate and separate families and from this generational lineage. Absolutely. And if you see the creation of all the wars that they've done throughout time and the displacement of population that have been spread throughout the realm, nobody knows where they come from anymore. Nobody even has the most basic information going back 200 years. Like that's asking for a lot from someone if you ask them about their heritage. And they have done that purposeful. It's like the orphan trains and mm -hmm. like the incubator babies and all of this stuff to replace the population you know so it is like this is a really long long agenda that has taken them thousands of years to to get to this point so those that are in the rulership of this don't age like us mm -hmm. so six thousand years for them is not what it is for us. So it is about absolutely erasing every vestige of memory that you have and then repopulating, re assimilating these. You know, it's like suddenly you end up, if you ever go to Toronto or any of these big cities, there's all these buildings that don't belong mm -hmm. to the population that showed up. Yeah. They didn't yeah. Belong there. They just showed up there and, and assimilated, right? But there's nobody asks those questions. Nobody asks the questions about these so called great churches, you know, that they have that, you know, they, they can't tell you who built them. They can't say anything. They've been converted now into churches for pro programming. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you see this in everything. But every city you go to, is new it's been repopulated nobody can track anything like hardly at all and part of them you know resetting everything is also you know this realm has had technology over and over and over and over and over and over and over again right but somehow we only have photographs going back like how many years yeah exactly. and, even, and even then now you don't even have that anymore because it's in a cloud, mm -hmm. right? So this is part of their tactic. It's what How I call burning is when they, they get us to put everything digital mm -hmm. so that they can just erase it all in one sweep, yeah, right? Exactly. Book burning is not very effective, but digital burning is. And sure. uh, the other thing I wanted to, to kind of couple on, it's, you know, it just so happens that the exact same part of our brain that processes memory also processes our ability to visualize things. 
which is obviously a huge part of what our manifestational abilities are as magicians, right? Is to be able to visualize things. Mm -hmm. And it's that hippocampus in our brain that is under massive attack. Like it's hilarious. If you did a bi or a, a cross section on the average brain, this is like about that big, just you could barely see it. And it's, it looks like it's made out of tissue paper. Einstein's was like a, you know, a bodybuilder's bicep stuck in the middle of his brain, you know, because he, yeah. he used it all the time. And um, it does work like a muscle where the more we use it, the more powerful it gets. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, part of uh, the other part of it has been feeding our imagination for us mm -hmm. through, you know, turning all books into movies, like especially all of the great books, right? Mm -hmm. Turning them all into movies, basically hijacking our visualization processing for us as well. It were you going to say something? Lana? I was going to say, so I call that the interface system mm -hmm. because the machine has created technology in your body so that you specifically interface with it, with its software. And it will tell you what to see. It will tell you what to sense. It will limit your potential of what you can perceive. And it hooks into you as a machine because you've been created and augmented. So you can interface with that reality machine specifically according to what it wants you to be able to perceive or not perceive. That's, I think that's why Google is so dangerous. I, you know, probably 15, 16 years ago, I read an article about Google that was basically saying, is Google making us dumber? Because what was happening was that you would have a question and you would go and Google it. And as opposed to actually doing proper research and retaining that in your brain, you, it went into short-term memory and then it just got spat right back out. And I, I think, again, this is by design because what we don't want is people to actually be reflective and actually absorb information and have like data. So this is why Neuralink is being pushed because mm -hmm. the whole idea is, oh, you'll be able to learn a language or you'll be able to, you know, have an entire cyclopedia of information in your brain. But whose information is that that's going to be downloaded into that brain? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I believe that they're making this technology so that we don't figure out that we're capable of those things. Mm hmm it would be interesting to know exactly how much, well, not maybe exactly, but how much wiggle room there was, how many, how much uh, room for variation there were in these replays. It would be interesting to be able to onion skin them and just lay them on top of one another to see what the different variations were of the replays the last five times and before where we're at right now in the sixth time. Um, because I'm, I, you know, I'm, I, I immediately jump to how can we tweak this? How can we, you know, what can we do here? What are the boundaries? Um, are there boundaries? Um, obviously, there are since we're, we seem to be inside of a movie. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Um, you, you say not to give up magic, though, Shane, right? Because there's still some value to practicing and excelling at that. Would all of these um, dumbass uh, AI systems and uh, ET races that try to control other races inevitably always end up having to find out the hard way is, you know, nature and the universe are always going to win. The yeah. soul always wins. Exactly. You know, um, uh, part of what people were getting upset about when they heard the machine is that they, uh, they, they were just missing the part where I said, like, we bleed through even though it's there right? Mm -hmm. Our connection to this planet could not be cut off by anything, right? All of this augmenting that they're trying to do to our genetics to cut us off from all of this, it has not and it will not ultimately work, right? Because choice is involved, free will is involved, we can always push back against that. Mm -hmm. And obviously, we live on a planet where the majority are choosing not to, and that makes it appear like we can't. But yes. that's their choice. That doesn't mean that we can't, right? So, yeah, that's uh, that's the part that, you know, one way or another, that's the, why we say the light always wins, right? Is because we do, you know, we're outside of all of this already anyways. We're playing this game intentionally and we are active players in it. And we make choices every minute of every day that still determine whatever that outcome is. And when you were talking about like comparing the different loops, 
you know, if you were to take that overview and get to see that basically you're going to look for the correlations you're going to look for kind of the gist of things right that's what's going to matter the most and what matters the most is that you know all of this all of these saviors that we've had over time have set humanity on a path where they don't have the responsibility and discipline to do things on their own Mm -hmm. and one way or another they're going to have to figure that out right and um this this machine is just its way of showing it to us in a very distinct way. What we're seeing in society right now is a very distinct way of just showing it to us, right? And like I've been saying this about AI, that's like almost a temptation for you to learn how your brain can actually function at a higher level. The most powerful quantum computer on planet Earth exists between every one of our ears. Mm -hmm. So you just need to learn how to use it in that way, right? And don't just rely on them to teach you how to do it. I love it. So it, it was important for them in the last reset in the 1800s. After the reset, the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds, and, you know, there's many quotes that they did, was basically saying that the whole repopulation was to get rid of those that were a threat because they could really think and they were creatives. So they really did a good job to, you know, wipe that all and get rid of the actual middle class, which wasn't a middle class. Middle class was very heightened, very creative, very inspired. Mm -hmm. So they got rid of that all. And they said, all we want is a workforce. We don't want anyone to think. And that was, you know, from the 1800s after the reset. Mm -hmm. And that's the population we are currently in today. Yeah, it's it's interesting. In in my studies, I have examined the pivot and the shift in our in this reality from a agrarian culture and people really being connected to the land and working with the land to more of an urbanized culture and how that influenced and affected people. And so much of that was extremely emasculating for men, taking men, men did not answer to other men in the way that they do now. So taking a man who was working his land, who had his entire family on his land and working his land and every member of that family having a very specific role that kept their world going, to now we're moving into cities, the first shift of that was that women and children were working in the factories because men would not take orders from other men. So what happened? Men started to drink heavily. Mm -hmm. So then when women and children got completely exhausted, then we got men into the factories and it, it really kind of lowered the human frequency because the connection with the land was gone. So it wasn't just a man taking an order from another man. It's now I'm not working with the natural cycle of the earth. I'm not connected. I'm not putting my hands into the dirt and getting that vibratory frequency of the earth. So all by design, absolutely all by design. But that to me speaks of desperation, right? All of these extreme tactics, to me, speaks of their level of desperation because of our divine template is so amazing. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, the genetic alterations that we point to as being our limitations are actually our strengths. And then we're, we're told that it's our limitations so that we don't discover that it's actually our strengths along the way, right? And uh, very much the same thing that they're doing with us now with handing us all this technology to do all the heavy lifting for us, right? Instead of teaching, you know, three-year-olds how to use magic, like we should just start doing tomorrow, and uh, we should have just started doing 200 years ago, and again, 400 years ago, but we didn't, right? And um, yeah, I, that that shift, and, and that, that leads to my opinion of you know, a lot of people are just really irresponsible. And then the ones who do have that discipline and responsibility really like the control once they have it. So, um, you know, human nature just kind of plays out in its most base form on both sides of that, unfortunately, which perpetuates the whole thing. Right. So, 
um, trying to find some balance in there is we kind of missed it. And uh, yeah, I mean, the last thing I wanted to say too, because I meant to say it earlier was, you know, the original version of this, the original timeline, if you will, that the movies were playing, we should be in a lot more severe um, circumstances than we are right now, just in terms of our day-to-day -day life. Like we really should be in a place in society right now where we couldn't be having this conversation. So in a way that is, you know, a sign, if you will, that the, the machine has bent to our consciousness and actually presented us with something that's a little bit more humane than what we actually put ourselves through in the first place. So, um, you know, just kind of put, put that out there too. Right. And what a, I want to add to what you were saying, Shane, is that in school, part of this programming for school as part of the reset is to convince children that their imagination is not real. And, you know, they start right from the beginning because they know the power of your imagination. That is where your magic is. So if you can convince a child that it's just their imagination and it's not real and it's a figment and don't waste your time and don't bother me with it. Then right then and there you alter their DNA and their ability to activate those supernatural natural gifts. Yeah. And then, then stuff them and indoctrinate them with the idea of materialism and the fact that we only live one life and, life is about acquiring things and making money and then you get somebody who's so brainwashed they have no idea what who they are what their purpose is or where they are and they live a groundhog day and then die yeah <laughs> exactly fodder for the for the machine yeah um what okay shane you in the in the video series you mentioned um it seems like, Lauda, you've been disclosing this um, gradually throughout your work and your podcast. But Shane, you seem to have had a moment where um, you were, I think you, you quoted it, unplugged. You were taken out of the simulation for a bit and kind of, sh I don't know, I don't know whether you were shown or whether you just explored or how you acquired this information, but is there any way that you can tell us about that or what, what happened or allude to what happened? Well, it was something I knew of ahead of time. Um, basically, it, you know, the most simple way for people to understand it is just look at, you know, the movie, The Matrix, right? And mm -hmm. imagine that we are actually in a pod. It's not exactly the same, but if you were just imagine it like that for just to, to grasp the concept. Um, and then the idea of unplugging someone would be just like what you saw with Neo in the Matrix, where they unplugged him and then they had to wake his body up and, mm -hmm. and, and all of the above. So it was very much like that um, in terms of, you know, my existence as Shane. It was something I knew about ahead of time. So I kind of had a little bit of warning, sure. but Shane still operated like this body still went to work, still uh, dealt with my girlfriend, still did all of those things. Um, there was at least one person in my life. Uh, in Shane's life, I should say, who knew this was coming and and to kind of watch on my behalf. But um, at the time, I worked for a security company, so a lot of what I was doing was actually recorded on camera. Mm -hmm. But uh, for me, it was it was very interesting to watch myself on camera because I wasn't here yeah. operating that. Crazy. There's also some interesting stories. Like I had a very frank conversation with my then girlfriend that I never would have consciously had with her <laughs> um, as an example and. And so I ended up having to explain it all to her because she was the one who noticed she lived with me. She was like, where have you been? Like, who was that guy? And she knows enough about my background to notice that something was up and sure. question it. Right. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, so that's kind of what it was like. And then on, in terms of what was going on on the outside, it was um, kind of hard to explain, but they needed some type of counter currency to counter current, sorry, to um, disrupt whatever, was going on out there that's the way to explain it and so it was a group of us it wasn't just me um and yeah i don't know how much detail you want me to go into that i don't like to um okay just, yeah then don't worry about it yeah. I, I prefer to keep the story or keep the information about the information not about me and my mm -hmm. experience but sure. um, at the same time uh i think that answers your question okay for sure lauda did you have a moment or does was this something that was kind of shown to you throughout your life uh well it was shown to me before i was born okay 
so I came in for this. Mm -hmm. So it was never, um, there was never like, I, I never woke up or any of that. Like it just, it, I just came in just mm -hmm. so exactly the way I am is how I came in. So when I was, when I was able to talk when I was really little, the first word I spoke was Megiddo, um, you know, because I'm speaking about the, you know, the stuff that they're trying to manifest, right? The, the world colossal war. Um, that was the first word. So, yeah, I just came in with this. Mm -hmm. But they, um, they put that black alien goo in me and they tried to take me over and that happened when i was 13 so um that was probably my unplugging when i got out of that because there was no blood in my body when i was taken to the emergency my what was in my body was this black alien goo wow and they, um, all of the doctors were like flipping out because they said, this isn't human. This isn't animal. And they even went as far as saying, it's not even plant-based. This is alien and we don't know what it is and we don't know how to save you. Right. And then, um, that's when the military helicopter came in with, uh, their military men and a bunch of, um, uh, they wheeled in substances, right, that they hooked me up to. And that's how I survived it. But that would be, to me, the, the biggest feeling, the biggest fight of my life for that artificial essence that was trying to take me over and trying to take my soul. So that battle was I can't I don't even have words to describe it but coming out of that and fighting with everything I have on all levels and having help helping me fight is is the unplugging right but weirdly enough not only is it the unplugging because the spirit is the ultimate power but now I got an inside to the machine. So it's weird because that inside to the machine gives me information that could only have happened from that. And, and the uh, sorry, and sorry. ability. Right? The, um, the people who ran us through these programs aren't as aware of the machine as we are. Yeah. Mm. It was, it's a lot of like, um, I gave you an experience of, you know, being unplugged for a specific purpose, but my awareness of it, like I, I even made those videos for years after that experience. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, this has been something that's been in kind of in my awareness for a very long time since I was a little kid, I've been coming to terms with it mm -hmm. kind of most of my life, to be honest, and, and trying to figure out what exactly it means, if it means anything and what the perimeters of it all are, but it's, um, the whole reason that, you know, loud and I had the same experience actually with them experimenting with these black goos with us was because they were trying to figure out what it was and they were what trying the to was. see if we could help them figure out what it was. And um, I think that universally we all um, kind of figured out on our own what it was, but at the time they did that, I don't think any of us had the language to even tell them back what they would have wanted to hear from us. Mm -hmm. Right. If that makes sense. It's like what we brought back from the experience, we wouldn't have even been able to relay to them. So it was kind of, you know, a failed experience. But yeah, uh, the way that she, uh, Lauda describes, you know, that's kind of being unplugged, that overtaking, that is the same experience of being uh, that they in induced in us, mm -hmm. um, not realizing that that's what they were doing. Yeah. Right. One thing I notice about you, Lauda, that I have found interesting in this hour that we've been together nearly is that you have been able to read my mind. You have been saying exactly what I've been thinking at the exact moment that I'm thinking it. So there's this, this synergy that's happening between us that I really 
dig because that's something you can't contrive. It's either there or it's not. Do you feel that being in these projects and in these programs since you were a child, that it's given you other abilities that perhaps other people aren't necessarily tuned in that they have, like the ability to, I mean, saying reading someone's mind sounds so like woo woo, but you know what I mean? Like picking up, being able to adjust your frequency to another person. Is that something that you've always experienced? Or am I just special? I think, I think that, <laughs> well, no, I, I know you're, you're right. Uh, because I did come in with those gifts, but the projects enhanced certain things. So, you know, this is, this is kind of like their forte. They take what your meta gifts are, what your meta abilities are, and then they, they enhance them. And certain things that are too threatening for them, they'll try and do the opposite. Mm. So yeah, there there are enhancements for sure. Um, they've also gone out of their way to make certain of my gifts dormant. So it's it's uh, you know things that we exhibit, but it's something that we all are capable of and all have, right? Like this should be the baseline. Exactly. Um, the, we are, we as what appears like an anomaly should be the baseline. And so that's kind of why they used us the way that they did and enhancing, nourishing or nurturing um, that path for us when we were very young is why it works that way. Right. Um, the physical brain and the way that formulates, like, there's a reason for the 27 club. And that's because after that 10,000 days of life, your brain computer solidifies itself. Mm -hmm. And so if you haven't learned any of these concepts prior to that, it's going to be really hard to fill a cup that's already full to you to quote right. Avatar. Right. Yeah. And um, so that's why if they do notice, you know, us as children and they think that they can, you know, manipulate and control us, then they'll bring us into these things and, you know, utilize exploit our abilities but through doing that they have to enhance it they have to nur nurture it they have to train us in how to use it right and help us understand it and i know my own experience with that the lie is different at every level you know like it took you know multiple programs and multiple different things to really understand what was going on you know a lot of the programs they involve simulations right so it's not literally like we're spending two years in a chair Right. Mm -hmm. It's just perceptually we are spending two years in a chair. Mm -hmm. Right. Really, it's only about five minutes. But to to us, it feels like, you know, multiple years have gone by and kind of like the, the description is a simulation that can set the scene. Right. So, you know, if this let's say I was nine while they were doing this to me, they could put me into a 29 year old male. And with all the same faculties that a 29 year old male will have all that biology that maybe at nine years old, I haven't even felt yet. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. As an example, that's why I was picking that. But, and then you, you bring all that memory back with you. Right. So um, in doing that, they're, they're, you know, putting us in situations where they can safe and effectively to use that terminology, test our abilities and gradually, you know, train us on them and enhance them. So I had actually done a video that was called all, all of the good things, which was just to point out that like these programs weren't all bad in that way. Like, you know, there's a lot of strength that they um, instilled in us as well, or at least helped us. Uh, you know, I could just imagine my life without it. It would have been not good. Right. So um, without their guidance, without that order that they presented, um, you know, it, it was needed. And there's various levels to that, but um, that's why it's there because, you know, if, if we don't have it trained, it goes to sleep basically. Yeah. And so with the majority of the public, they've just put it all in movies and put it all in stories and put it all in woo woo -ville so that, you know, someone like you would feel obligated to say, you know, the feeling like you're reading my, my mind is woo woo. You shouldn't even have that thought. Yeah. Right? Okay. That, that thought there is exactly, you know, why maybe it's, it's easier for, for louder than it is for you just as that example right or mm -hmm. for one person to the next person uh conviction is convincing your brain that it's real and um that's a lot easier when you're three than it is when you're 30. so what were your thoughts and impressions of that uh a lot less doomy gloomy than i thought it was going to be mm -hmm. i had a lot of anxiety about re 
doing this uh, Shane interview and redoing it, like doing it again, like oh. speaking to him again because he's already been on the show. Um, but it felt a lot less um, foregone conclusiony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think. Are you talking about because of the videos that we watched? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I got all freaked out about the videos, and you guys should watch them if you uh, are interested to see what freaks me out. <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully you should have watched them before you listen to this, because it will it make a lot of more sense. A lot of more. A lot of more sense. Uh. <laughs> Screaming here, Jeez, Louise, <laughs> which is better than whispering. But I usually have to crank you up. But exactly. anyway, um, what was I going to say? Oh, yes. Watching these uh, machine, machine videos will definitely help with this conversation. Uh, hopefully you've already done that. But I think I spent, I w watched the whole gamut. I started off with Randy's finger wagging. Um, Randy. Randy Malgans, who's going to be on the podcast. He's off planet uh, TV. Um, used to do a podcast with Emily Moyer. Um, I think and, they still do sometimes, don't they? No, they no, don't. Okay. No. Uh, what was I going to say? You started out with Randy. Yes. So that led me to um, Shane's stuff. And then that led me to, I think the first thing I listened to was the actually the last video that he made, which was the Q&A with all of the people mm -hmm. asking questions on Facebook and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah, I got to see it in a greater context. I don't think we ever got that far with you. So you we just, did. Yeah. We watched all of it. We started with the Q&A. Well, we started, I think we watched the first two videos and then we skipped to the Q&A, I think is what it was. Yeah. Yeah. Or the yeah. first video. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, so on the, in some ways, it does seem bleak and horrible and like there's no, we have no choices and it's all a destiny and that we have no role in that. But uh, especially after this conversation, but after listening to more after that, I don't feel strongly in that direction. I feel, uh, I think, and I feel both at the same time, which is cool. <laughs> I, th I think that uh anything that makes me uh, question my own uh strength and my own uh, ability to push myself and and be the architect of my reality freaks me out so uh i think what i liked about this conversation and what I liked about Lauda's input in this conversation is that it is a second by second decision. Every choice you make, everything you do informs your story. And I believe that. I don't think that there, while there may be puppet masters that are trying to control the narrative and trying to control this version of reality that we're in. I don't think that it is a foregone conclusion that the story's already been written and that it's all done. And, you know, this kind of nihilistic view of fuck it, it doesn't really matter. I don't buy that. I think that we are in a, a very powerful position and that's where we are. So, um, where where they want our our energy so desperately is that the spirit is unbreakable and i think that that's the thing that i am really you know harnessing my hitching my wagon to as mm -hmm. they say yeah it's a trick uh, like we were talking about the trick of the you know the white light uh, in between lives i think the trick of this world is the thinking that um, that that's all there is, that that's all the layers there are. The physical course, physical realm is all there is to it. And to think anything, especially these days when we've gotten so steeped in materialism and atheism and all that stuff, that anything that would remotely connect us to anything greater than us, uh, that seems to be more inevitable than ever. So I think that, I, I don't think, it can't help but cause some sort of depression in people, some sort of like hopelessness. If they feel like this is it, like 
they've got to fucking work at a gas station every day of their life and that's all they have to to live for maybe they can save up for a big screen tv right but i again i i am of the the mindset that you know the ego is the thing that excels toward greatness so when you go to like a past life uh, regressionist or or someone who's going to read your past lives you know you want to hear that you were cleopatra you want to hear that you were some great great leader or you had some great position and uh, you know there was no one who was the ditch digger <laughs> like come on you know i think that that just because i i agree with what shane was saying like just because someone is a uh maybe seems to hold like a lowly position in life doesn't mean that that person isn't enlightened. Exactly. And I used to love that when I would go into these work situations where I was cleaning houses for wealthy people. And, you know, they're looking at me like, why is this chick cleaning my house? Like who, who is she? What's the real story here? And I think it's because I wasn't walking into that situation feeling like I was a slave or lesser than I saw these people as my equal. And so I think you can do any job in the world with intent and integrity. And I think that's the important thing is that what, what this conversation reminded me of is that this is about the integrity that we carry in our lives, no matter what position we are um, holding. For sure. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, just to add a little bit of the backstory to the machine narrative that will simply put things in a, in a different perspective and maybe instantly make it not seem so bleak for those of you that have not watched those videos, is that this machine began to encase Earth supposedly well gaia supposedly with gaia's um permission permission yes to not only put humans in a in a state of stasis uh, but also the planet too so that they both could heal um a sequence of events that i won't go into right now uh made the earth uh almost uninhabitable or at least um, put it in a position where it was very difficult for it to gain its footing again uh, by a series of uh, technology mishaps stemming from the Lemurians and the Atlanteans. Um, and that Gaia agreed to uh, have this machine encase it so that it, Gaia, and the inhabitants of Gaia could be put in a suspended animation so that they could both heal. And that it was only supposed to play the 6,000-year uh, recording simulation was only supposed to play once and then that would be it everybody would be in a better place and then the simulation would stop and we would go back to business as usual but something happened and that loop played six times and we're on the end of the sixth loop now the the problem has been fixed and so that scenario is supposedly going to play out very soon because as you see we're speeding towards pods and uh, trends slash post-humanism as we speak if we choose that if we choose that yeah, and i i think that's the most important thing for you to engage in your mindset is that everything you do is a choice so you know when i first heard shane's uh talks and and his uh description of this i was thinking then why am I on a diet? Why am I eating well? Why am I going to university? Why am I trying to improve my life and my mind? And, and why do I critically think? Like, what are all the things that I'm doing? What's the point, basically? And I had to really have a sit with myself, come to Jesus moment where I thought, well, because this is a test. And if I do these things i'm really honing my own energy and i'm i'm honing my life force by doing these things so that's why it's not because 
I'm trying to become wealthy or I'm trying to hop in the pod or I want to live in some post-human world. It's because I know that every step that I take is valuable and valid and important and that the thing that I can change in this reality and in this simulation, if we want to use that those terms, is my role in that. Yeah, absolutely. And that's over another level of overcoming the trick. Um, so yeah, I think all in all, it was, um, it was a great, great conversation. Uh, I felt very good about it. It was great to meet Lauda. Um, I've heard her podcasts in researching this and after stumbling upon her, after stumbling upon Shane's machine series and yeah, very fascinating stuff. Um, and interesting that they have been sort of in the same circles ever since they were children and possibly even before that. Yeah, and and maybe there are millions of versions of reality and of uh, this this realm that we are in, and this is the one that we are choosing right now to focus on. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason we're choosing to focus on this one because this is the one that that affords us the most growth. And so again, those are the things that I want to uh, really put my energy into and understand these soul contracts that the reason that you and I are together is because we are together because this is the best form of our humanness in order to grow as souls is being together in this iteration of reality. And I'm into it. It's hey. awesome. Oh my it's God. It's so much fun. It's just like one big hot tub all the time. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> well, only we are in it. Not oh, okay, people. cool. Yeah, I'm good with that. Roadies aren't getting in it or anything like <laughs> truck drivers. Ew. Nothing, nothing against roadies or truck drivers. No, but I don't want to teabag with either one of them. Oh my no, God. Thanks. You had to go there, didn't you? Well, that's a Kevin James bit where he talks about getting into a jacuzzi with his grandma and he's like, no one wants to teabag with grandma's bathing suit or something where, you know, when you get in and you're the, the thing that you're in, like the, the bathing suit you, you were in gets like full of air. Oh yeah. 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 That's what he was talking okay. about. I thought no. you were talking like John Waters. Oh no, God. Okay. No. Okay. Creepy. Sorry. Creepy. To, sorry to underestimate you. God, and what what a weird turn this turned. <laughs> we took a, a hard left. Okay, let's <laughs> turn right back out of it. Thank you so, so very much for listening. Um, I hope, like I always hope, that you glean something positive out of it and possibly learn something and uh, at the very least have some things to think about. Um, and had a few laughs. Yes, and if you haven't, <laughs> if you haven't seen, uh, Shane's videos at this point, now would be a good time to do that. Yeah. If you're interested, if this topic interests you more. Yeah. And don't get freaked out. And if you decide to get freaked out, that's okay too. Yeah. I mean, maybe if you get too freaked out, just stop. I mean, it's yeah. not, nothing yeah. is really going to change if you do or you don't. Yeah. The main thing is that you are in control of your destiny and your narrative and the road that you are walking on every day and that's really amazing when you think about that that the you know the government's not in charge of you 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 know your your life circumstances are not in charge you are the one who is steering this ship and yep. so steer it into the best possible reality and version of yourself that you can. That's oh, yes. what we're here to do. Absolutely. If you have any guest suggestions or you would like to tell us how much you love us or um, have casserole recipes, although we're not eating casseroles right now, but we like to collect recipes for when we can, um, you can send them to the melt podcast at protonmail.com or you can always reach me at hunter hyphen muse at protonmail.com and we really love all of your feedback on uh, proton everything that you send us we really love to hear from the patrons we love to hear all of your comments and your suggestions and your feedback it's really important 
And thank you all for uh, sharing and retweeting and liking all the content that we put out. It's really people are going to, they're going to respect your suggestions or the things that you approve or like uh, much more than they are some strangers like us. Mm -hmm. So that goes a long way uh, to helping hopefully build this community and make it bigger. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it's, that's, that's really what it's just, it goes down to word of mouth. That's the most. Yeah. And we pay no advertising. We don't push anybody's products. Uh, we r really are a, a self run ship here. Basically, Another ship yes. reference. What's going on? Maritime law. That's much. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> um and thank you of course to the patrons who contribute um yep. it's a great time to be a patron because we have a uh, limited series that uh, emily moyer laura not wilson. laura palmer laura, laura wilson, wilson that we love <laughs> and hunter and i are doing we're doing a deep dive into the twin peaks canon yeah <clears throat> excuse me um you also get full length episodes and <clears throat> And Obviously, we have books that we give away. If you guys uh, are interested in any books, we post on Patreon. Patreon. Oh, Patreon. We post on Patreon. Oh, my God. I'm so hungry right yeah, now. Yeah, I am too. We post on Patreon books that we have, and I will gladly send you a book if you are a Patreon member. And some milk. <clears throat> what the hell is going on with my... <laughs> and some milk. And some milk stickers. And some milk stickers, yes. <laughs> <clears throat> you also get... Uh, access to our <laughs> he's an old prospector <laughs> our monthly <laughs> could you finish it our monthly melt meetups that's when i turn into a musical robot <laughs> gosh i hate when my voice gives out it's like the does, interface David. between yeah anyway he don't like it i don't like it <laughs> Thank you. And we're not drunk. That's what's we're so not, hilarious. Yeah. Or high or we're on totally anything. Totally sober. Sober as a mober. <laughs> All right. All right. We we gotta cut out of here. It's yes. it's been almost 20 minutes that we've been babbling. Okay. This is literally the after babble. We love you. We love you. Take care of yourselves. Reflect your good selves out into the world. Exactly. That will change the realm. Yeah. Be a decent person. That's yes. all that matters. It's pretty easy to. Yep. Ta-ta. Bye. Goodbye.